Hey, how's it going, YouTube? I'm back in the video, and today I'm going to be talking about why the Indiana Pacers could be the next super team. Now, before I do get into this video, I prep this the, every type of the video like I make this. This is a series I've been doing on my channel for the past three years now, which means that every single time that I talk about, like, say, the next super team, that is just a series. Now, obviously, the Indiana Pacers most likely will not be the next super team next year, but I make these type of videos on teams like the New York Knicks, the Phoenix Suns, and just a whole bunch of other teams around the NBA every single single team in the NBA right after free agency ends I start this series and I'm pretty much go over the biggest strengths for every single team and why I personally think they could be good in the following season or next year so yeah I just want to get all that out of the way before I do make this video and before some of you guys do get kind of angry at me for this this is just a series and I do this for everybody and I'll be getting into four reasons why I think the Indiana Pacers could potentially be the next super team this year so without further ado without rambling on too much let's get right into this video now for my first reason this video is going to be that they have a very very strong backcourt this year probably one of the best backcourts going into the next season once Victor Oladipo does get healthy around December whatever they will most likely have one of the strongest backcourts in the entire NBA as they in the free agency were able to add Malcolm Brogdon who in my opinion is an extremely extremely underrated player and I think he's going to finally get the recognition he deserves playing alongside of Oladipo with the Indiana Pacers. So now that they have two players at the point guard and shooting guard position that are legit scorers and last year averaged over 15 points per game. Oladipo averaged 18 points per game and, Vic, and um, Brogdon averaged 16 points per game last year. So it was two very, very good scores and they're always going to be a scoring threat at any time that they have the basketball and are on offense. And also it's going to take a ton of the pressure off of Victor Oladipo right now because Oladipo, really outside of Miles Turner, is definitely by far the best player on the team and has to carry most of the scoring load. But now with Malcolm Brogdon, that's going to be 15 points per game that if Victor Oladipo does not have to worry about scoring. That's going to help their team just be that much better on offense and be that much better of a team in general and I think it's going to be very very hard to stop them on any given night as Victor Oladipo is having a bad night when I have Malcolm Brogdon to pick up the slack and vice versa and also I mean it's going to help Oladipo a whole bunch as now they're going to be complimenting each other's games a ton as Oladipo when he slashes and is going to be able to dish it out to Malcolm Brogdon who is a sharpshooter and can hit a three but very very well it's going to make Malcolm Brogdon that much more effective because now defenses are going to have to stretch out even more to help uh, guard Malcolm Brogdon on the perimeter, which is going to help Oladipo even cut more because the, the um, defense is going to be stretched even more thin than it already would be because of how good of a shooter Malcolm Brogdon is. And Oladipo is already a good shooter, so they already have to stretch out all enough, so it's going to be stretched very, very thin and make it just that much easier for Oladipo to slash and get to the paint. And it's going to make it that much easier for Miles Turner as well to score in the paint as he's going to get more one on one situations than he ever would because Malcolm Brogdon is going to be stretching out the defense a ton. But now my second reason for his video is going to be that they have a very, very deep team. And now what I mean by this is that, yes, they have a very, very good starting lineup with Victor Oladipo, Malcolm Brogdon, TJ Warren, DeMontis Sabonis, and Miles Turner. And that's an extremely, extremely good starting lineup. But then you look at their bench, it is just as good as they have TJ McConnell, Aaron Holiday, Jerry Lamb, and Doug McDermott. Doug McDermott, he we've seen a ton of potential out of him. He can light up the three-pointer. Aaron Holiday was one of my favorite rookies coming out of this class, and he had a pretty good rookie year, and I'm sure he's going to just improve on that. Jeremy Lamb was one of the best scorers on the Charlotte Hornet last year, and he'll be coming off the bench. And also, TJ McConnell is just a good veteran-type point guard to have off your bench. That's really going to be able to keep the game flow and keep the, um, really have someone that you can really rely on off your bench to handle the ball when people like Oladipo and Brogdon are out of the game. So I think this bench is very, very good, and they definitely have one of the deepest teams in the NBA. At any time, you can have a legitimate, what, 12-man lineup and be able to rest and rotate those starters out and really help them rest. It's not only going to help them that game and help them win that game because their starters are going to be more rested coming into the fourth quarter, but also because their starters are going to be getting way less minutes and throughout the season it's going to get less fatigue, less chance of injury, and they're just going to make it that much better when it comes playoff time. So yeah, this they're a very deep team and they have a very good backcourt, but now my third reason for his video is going to be that their defense is extremely, extremely strong. As last year, they were ranked the third best defense with Oladipo having a great motor and Miles Turner's shot blocking ability. They're a very, very good team. And once again, Malcolm Brogdon and TJ Warren being added to the team, they should now remain in the top five defensive teams because once Oladipo gets back and what, if Miles Turner just stays as good as he is or even gets better on defense, they should definitely have no problem staying a top five defensive team. And anytime you're that good of a defensive team in the NBA, you have a chance to make the playoffs and make a deep run because, I mean, 
being able to score a ton of points is not enough. You have to be able to prevent people from scoring a ton of points on you, as every team's offense at this point is extremely, extremely good. And I mean, they are everybody's offense is capable of putting up 100 points on any given night. And if you can put up 100 points, you have a chance to win every single game. So if your defense can make it way harder for them to score 100 points, you have a way, way bigger chance of winning games. And I think they, they definitely have a top five defense in the NBA. But their biggest thing, in my opinion, what they did this offseason was improve their offense a ton. Now, what I mean by this is last year they were a ranked below average offense only at 18. Now yes partially could be because Oladipo went down midway through the year but they were still probably only going to be at best a middle of the pack fit ranked 15th offense in the NBA when Oladipo was there. So I think them improving their offense was huge as they added like I said a sharpshooter Malcolm Bryan who averaged 15 points per game plus TJ Warren who's young probably going to improve was a great player they stole him from the Suns and he was averaging 20 points per game last year with the Phoenix Suns. So they've added pretty much essentially 35 points per game worth of offense in one offseason. That's going to probably make them a top 10 offense in the entire NBA because Oladipo's production is going to go up. Same with Brogdon. Probably the same with TJ Warren's might go down, but he's going to be very effective. Miles Turner's offense is going to go because he can get more one-on-one -on -one situations in the paint. And I think of all, just all around, this offense is going to be much, much better than what it was last year. So with their defense and offense being improved, well, not really defense being improved, but their defense is still probably top five their offense is now going to be top 10 most likely they have extreme depth which is going to make it a lot better with injuries wise and it's going to really help the team not have to give their starters a ton of minutes and get them fatigued at the end of the season and them having a strong backcourt i think with all that being said i think this team could be a very very good team and maybe a sleeper pick to even make the conference finals next year but unfortunately guys and different deals so comment below do you agree with me do you think the pacers could make the conference finals how far do you think they're going to be how good do you think they're going to be i want to hear your thoughts and comment section below and if you did like the video then point like button and subscribe button and if you have any of your ideas you want to see me make in the future comment those below as well and i hope you have a blessed day can i have a blessed day so you need to have a blessed day see you in the next video goodbye boo blah, blah, blah.